Hey guys, welcome to the rollout. I'm Lindsay Rousseau. And I'm Genevieve Marie. Hello and welcome. Genevieve, look at my background. <laughs> it's so colorful. It's almost like it's trying to distract from something. I know. So we we promised we kept promising we would do this, and we're finally doing it. Yes, uh, Wonder Woman 1984, the review, the opinions, the mockery, it's yes, coming. And we, and we know it's been a while since it's been out. But it, but. Was, it was very painful. I feel also that having some time to reflect yeah. has given me a lot of perspective on where to even begin to tackle yeah. all the things that I personally felt were yeah. just wrong with it. <laughs> And, you know, in the meantime, we've had a new Suicide Squad, which I feel like in that instance, they heard the criticisms of the first one and were like, hmm, let's not let's not fuck up the second one. Let's 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 listen to what people said and fix it. I actually enjoyed the, the well, it's not the sequel, the reboot, whatever you want to call it. I liked the latest Suicide Squad. Right. And I say that with a grain of salt because I have not liked many of these DC movies but you know what they listened they took I the do and they fixed it I kind of do feel like this is almost punishment for people not supporting or going to see the birds of prey movie because you know and I yeah. because that came out before wonder woman did and they're just like well they didn't like that so and i feel so bad because i have to say margot robbie as harley quinn spot on like she's I'm always fan. fantastic yes i believe like everybody in that movie like for with the roles that they had i believe yeah. that they were all fantastic it's a solid movie uh, it makes some really great choices as far as, you know, costuming and yeah. shooting though and, you know, shooting all their female cast, you know, without that sort of really weird male gazy thing that you got with Su the first Suicide Squad. I thought it was great. And then uh, Wonder Woman 1984 came out and we kind of backpedaled a bit on a lot yeah. of the quality. I mean, it's, it's like we <laughs> went back in time. And the fact I, that it, it was really, set in the eighties, they, they they're so okay. The so, they, so they, where do we start, Genevieve? Where, where do we start with all of this clusterfuck of a movie? Oh, okay, I, and I, I just, just say I really want to support Patty Jenkins. Patty Jenkins, you were one of the most powerful women in Hollywood. Like, please don't say you know make us think that this is like a testament to you as a person and your directorial right. capabilities. But we had some issues the film and also anyone yeah, watching this please don't take this as a critique and why we can't have female-led movies because black widow has shown that we can have female-led movies so yes, just putting so all I, that out there up front right so this obviously doesn't fall on one person alone or even just a handful of people for me personally i feel like entire departments failed on this on the making of this film like entire departments um everything from confusing tones to awkward editing to the theme constantly be changing yeah like weird messaging within the script that like at sometimes can feel really awkward to at worst being dangerous yeah <laughs> like there it, it was just an editing nightmare so let's start with the tone i the tone yeah, of let's the film for me was absolutely yeah. it was all over the place it was because you know we had the opening scene and i was like yes we never we get another epic amazonian start and then unfortunately unlike the first one we only get like five minutes of it and most of it's not robin wright and let's be honest most of us are here right. just to see robin wright because she even for the split second that she was in this film, I swear she had more stage presence than any other actor in this film. In well, like the five lines that she had, just the looks. It's like Rami Malek in Breaking Dawn, where yes. the minute he shows up on screen, you're, screen, you're like, that's magnetism. And I, I'm excited to see you. Like, I'm not exactly enjoying my experience right now in the theater, but like he shows up and you're like, 
oh, like, yeah, so they set me up on a good tone. I was like, ready to go. And the minute he leaves, you're just like, oh, okay. We're back. Honestly, that's how I felt about the first one. I had notes on the first one too, but yeah, so the Amazonians are the best part of this movie. They really are. So we go from this like wonderful fantasy epic, you know, we have this great, exciting, adventurous tone with sort of a sword and sandal vibe. And then immediately we cut to this weird family friendly campy superhero film that kind of reminds me of like every like family Christmas film that ever was. (laughs) And we have that mall scene where, you know, Wonder Woman is saving the folks, you know, like rescuing the cat and, you know, doing all of the things that, you know, we are used to like in a Tim Burton Batman movie or, you know, the original, very much the original Superman films. And you're just like, oh, this is like fun and quirky, but like, and it had the, even the cheap catch lines, you know, like that she says as she's saving them. Yeah. Right. And so like, I wouldn't have been so bothered going from the, you know, the Amazonian tone to this new tone, but like, if it just stayed, if it just stayed in its weird wonky Superman, you know, cheesy tone the entire time, fine. Absolutely. It's the 80s. Fine. We can do this. It's like, the 80s. Let's, let's we can do, do it. it. I was actually expecting it and kind of excited for that. But then we get into this weird, dark and gritty tone where you have Barbara Cheetah, who's almost like, who's almost assaulted in the park. And like that scene goes on for way too long and feels really like I mean, I was having flashbacks of like, are they trying to go the Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman route here? Like, that's almost where I felt like the tone went. I was like, dude, right, but you went from like campy darker Superman to like, I, yeah, it was like darker. I was like, oh man, did we just go Batman Catwoman here? You know, well, I was like. It's very strange to go from like something that was so light and upbeat and something that you're like, oh, maybe I can take the family to this. You, no, no. <laughs> to immediately being like no I cannot take the family to this like no this is really awkward and then finally finally the tone changes again and culminates in this muddy generic mess of a superhero yeah. film it and there's felt lots of like explosions and mind explosions. it felt like the justice league all over again <sighs> It was, it it just took all these tones that it was trying to work with and trying to, I don't know, maybe grapple with. And it came out being like this big muddy mess at the very end. I mean, it kind of like this, it's like this background. It was like, we're throwing a lot of shit out there and we're hoping that it's going to make this pretty pattern. But at the end of the day, you're like, I kind of see a W in there, but I'm not really sure because there's a lot of other shit that's distracting me. Yes. And so then like we go from a con- a confusing tone to a constantly changing theme. Oh, constantly. The, Again, the, the opening, the opening scene, we're like, okay, no shortcuts in life. No taking the easy way though. I'm like, right. For ingenuity, but I get your point. Like it's you gotta interesting. Do the whole thing. Right. And I mean, I think the first Wonder Woman also kind of got this like very strange, like ethereal, weird out there theme at the very end where she's like philosophizing about humanity and like whether or not like it's worth saving them or not. And she's like, well, it's a personal choice. I believe that we should save humanity. And it was just kind of like very strange. And I, for me, it didn't quite land. The, like they she didn't really argue her point that well this is completely different yeah um this isn't not being able to land the message of your film this is constantly changing the message of your film every five seconds and so I'm the, like was it like this in the writing did this happen in the editing I mean it's just it seems a bit of both yeah um so the the audience is usually supposed to walk away with a, an overarching theme for a movie. Right. Like, you know, you're, you're supposed to go in and, and like, you know, you have, you know, Spider-Man, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, uh, you know, like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, family and, you know, choosing who you call your family. Right. This, it, it starts with, 
you know, don't cheat there, you know, there's no glory in, in cheating. And, you know, the truth is, is everything. And then it goes from this weird monkey's paw thing where it's like, oh, be careful what you wish for. Right. And, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. And then the central message changes again at the very end with the weird, overly long magic lasso scene, which what's the magic lasso supposed to be even doing anyway? Like it, apparently, apparently we, it can do anything. Apparently now. it can do anything. Um, where Diana says, you know, all you can have is the truth. And, you know, like this is all you need. And which I don't even know what that is supposed to say. Right. <laughs> you know? We're talking about not taking shortcuts. Don't and take then we're shortcuts. talking about wishes, but with so when with wishes come consequences, but apparently, unless you figure out how to finagle the wish right, and then there aren't really cons, and then the whole wish thing threw me anyways, because I'm yeah. like, wait, but the rules apply here, but they don't apply here. And then yeah. it's like, oh, don't forget about family. Oh, but we don't really remember that we have a kid until the very end when we're like, oh, that's right, I've got a, I've got a kid. Redemption arc. And now we've got a redemption arc. And then and then some weird things. things. And then everything surrounding cheetah and yeah like okay what is the theme here i'm like i what is your messaging here again okay. we've got so, the michelle five for bat that you know cat woman thing going on the the dorky she even looks like i mean it's I, very similar hair and everything it's so it's similar it's yeah you're right. and i'm like okay so she's the cool smart dorky one yes now in 2021 that's awesome but then it's like oh no we're going we we're in the 80s and we're using 80s tropes. I'm like, just because your movie is set in the 80s doesn't mean you have to use the tropes that were popular in the 80s. And as right. soon as they went that route, and I was like, oh, and now she's hot and now everyone pays attention to her. Cool, that is great, great messaging for women in and female identifying people in 2021. Unless you're hot, nobody cares how smart you are or what any of your other qualities are. I about wanted to punch the screen when I saw that I'm sorry it was so it her character was just so weird I think I mean like we have our writers that we had for the Wonder Woman what if panel um none of them had seen the new Wonder Woman um as far as as I remember they, they all said they had not because they yes. had no interest in seeing however it. we had made a cheetah they had constructed a cheetah like character you know the sub boss right uh to the main villain uh who was medusa and she had a redemption arc and well deserved because she was you know treated badly um and you know she was a vulnerable person that the main villain took advantage of and manipulated and you know at the end she joins forces with diana and you know they fight they the villain together the big baddie yeah yeah and they take down the big big bad together that's exactly what needed to happen with cheetah but, but we don't we get don't it because we kill her in a really weird like like was this Mm, the cgi in that i'm sorry but like cgi has come a very very long way and if marvel's got the budget to do what they do could we have not gone the cats route with cheetah i'm just saying I, yeah it was i was like the fact that they killed her at the end i was like it's Whoa. very strange and she spends the whole movie pining to be diana but not the smart diana the oh my god you're so beautiful and cool and everybody pays attention to you i was just like I can't yeah, believe we're doing this in a movie with a lead female in 2021. It just seems strange to me that they would have this weird pitting women pitting themselves against women trope, right. which is fine. That's fine to have if that is the place in which Barbara starts off with, right. but that cannot continue and be the place where you end her with. It has to be her realizing that, you know, that Max is manipulating her, that, you know, this isn't the type, like she turns into a monster basically, oh, but, yeah. but she remembers that, like, she figures out that this isn't the type of monster, like she's not a monster inside, like this isn't who she really is. 
And, you know, instead of having that realization that, you know, she, this isn't her, this monster, this evil person, like she's actually just, you know, this smart, quirky, you know, woman from the office, instead of being redeemed at the end, she gets killed because she just continually fights against, you know, uh, Diana and the idea of not being able to be her. And it really sends a a bad message yeah it's not it isn't a message at all she doesn't really have a character arc she starts to have a character arc wardrobe and her hair (laughs) she starts to have a character arc and then I think after the scene on the plane with her and Max that kind of ends and you don't get sort of you don't get to have that arc finish and that's really disappointing uh because they basically replaced her character development with a giant cgi battle at the end that was boring that didn't seem like it went through like the last stages of editing and it just it wasn't right and instead we could have had her and diana at the end you know fighting to take down the big bad but instead we bring back weird chris pine character right i Um, (laughs) yeah which (laughs) like okay there is so much wrong with what goes on with the main characters of this film that it feels like to me Wonder Woman isn't Wonder Woman in this film. Like the Chris Pine character, like I don't really care about his character, you know, like he I don't understand why he's there. Yeah, Yeah, I don't understand why he's there. Like one, okay, great. In Wonder Woman one, he was a plot device. I get it. I took issue with the fact that like this guy she'd known for two weeks, now all of a sudden he dies and she finds her meaning in life, even though she's part God. I had an issue with that. But why did we bring him back for this movie at all? Except if we're like, oh my God, we need to get people to come see it and maybe they won't see Gal Gadot. So we need to bring Chris Pine back. I I do not understand what his purpose was in this movie. I think the idea was that they had such good magnetism on screen for the first movie that they really wanted to bring that back but it's like lightning in a bottle you are not going you know lightning is not going to strike twice and instead of moving the story story forward we were stuck yeah with this structure that we had created like in bringing his character back in bringing steve's character back we had to find a way to make him fit and that is what ended up resulting in this scenario where diana is no longer the Diana Wonder Woman that we have known and loved in the comic books, in the Linda Carter series. Right. This, this, this trope, not trope, but this plot device of Steve created some real problems for well, Diana's character. They, they didn't write it well at all. Like instead of Steve just like manifesting out of nothing and then just being there, They had him literally take over and invade another person's body and neither of them, neither Diana or Steve at any moment really took that into consideration. They were just, they just shrugged it off and like, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. This, who knows where this man is currently living, like in some like liminal space, like is he trapped in the body? Yeah, he he had a great apartment, so yay for that. But like, did he have a family? Does he have kids that he has to go see on the weekend? Can he see everything through the Chris Pine? Right, is he like screaming in his head? Exactly. So it was very weird because you see Wonder Woman do some very deplorable things in this movie. And to me, that effectively makes her unbelievable as yeah. the character of Wonder Woman. Like this she is was not selfish. Wonder Woman. In this movie, we saw selfishness, which right. I don't equate with Wonder Woman. Yes, it, you have bouts of, you know, you're not perfect all the time, but this entire plot of this movie was founded essentially on her selfishness. Right. And so like, I know she's, I know they're like coming at it from a point of like, she's grieving. And so like having this thing is like super important, but like 
no matter how difficult her grief, Wonder Woman would never act the way that she did. Also, when she realizes that she, years. right, right. But like, she would never have acted the way that she did when she realizes that she is causing an innocent person harm. When she realizes that having the Chris Pine character there is at the expense of invading another human being's body wonder woman that i know would never yeah. ever consider She'd be that. like oh crap let's figure out how to put you back or take right. you out or whatever exactly so now, let's go do a dress-up montage of you trying on all the clothes in his wardrobe right. in the apartment you broke into so instead of rejecting this like instead of rejecting this, like any moral person, like anybody with a moral compass would, Diana acts completely indifferent. Steve acts completely indifferent. And so like, I know I'm just like focusing on Diana here. I mean, Steve, his character, you know, does the exact same thing, but Diana is the central character. She's the most important one. So that's why I'm talking more about her, Right, exactly. you know? And so then she ends up sleeping with the man who has no control over his body or ability to consent, hello Wolfgang. And so then you have Wonder Woman committing assault. Yeah, <laughs> this is non-consensual. I mean, yeah, what? this is a person who is not in control of his faculties, being, he's essentially, you know, the passed out drunk at the frat party. Like he is, Right. Not aware, like, not in control, not able to consent. Sorry, Steve, you don't get to consent for him because no. it's not your body. Like I was screaming when I saw this. I was like, right. did we not realize we just wrote in a rape trope into right. a Wonder Woman movie? Well, this also happens in Bridgerton. The exact That's same good. thing happens and it goes it goes unnoticed and unmentioned. So it's clear that the writers or whoever was piecing this together did not see, did not I, understand yeah. that this is what was happening. Like they just, they did not realize that this is what they were writing into their this story. It had to go through so many levels before it even got to production. Like it had to go right. through writers, it had to go through editors, it had to go to producers, it had to go to the studio. So it has all of these these you know seeming checkpoints that it has to go through because obviously it's not quick to make a movie especially a movie of this budget so lots of people had to sign off on this storyline <laughs> so many before even the first scene was shot so how, how so many people happen? approved this so many people approved this and i don't know if they were just like oh well maybe the audience won't notice <laughs> i mean <laughs> which is probably where they easy went. to fix Right. They were probably watching it in like the screening room and they're probably like, oh, this is a problem, but maybe the audience won't notice. <laughs> Everybody noticed. Everybody, everybody noticed. noticed. And I, and like these, all these acts, like the breaking and entering to his apartment, stealing the dude's clothes, the non-consensual sex, not like it makes Wonder Woman a villain. It really does. Yeah. It makes her a, a, a villain. But like, I would also go so far as to say that the Wonder Woman in this movie, it, it, it makes her not Wonder Woman anymore. These acts make her not Wonder Woman anymore. This is just somebody running around the with the same name, with the same powers, in the same costume, but she's not Wonder Woman. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. that's you basically like ruined you didn't even ruin this character you didn't use this character yeah you wrote a completely different character and insane. and yeah and soiled the moon essentially insane yeah I, and, and this movie did have potential this movie oh, yeah. a lot of people's you know a lot of people's hopes for the future of you know women in cinema or in, in leading, you know, in having, you know, lead roles and, and directing and writing, like all, all sorts of and departments where, were writing on this. Right. And this is where I'm, I'm so happy we got Black Widow 
because we finally got, and this is what I wanted with Birds of Prey. We finally got a female driven movie where men are an afterthought. And I don't say that, you know, pedantically. It's like, yes, we had male characters in Black Widow, but they were not the central driving force. It was a story about her and her sister. With Wonder Woman, we have Wonder Woman, but I guess they just didn't think she could carry the movie on her own. So we had to give right. her Steve Rogers as well. We had in the to most give simplest, her a man. In the most simplest of terms, Black Widow passes the Bactyl test. Wonder Woman does not. Yes. Period. That that's yeah, just yeah. it. I think that that's just, you know, that's it in a bottle that it, no more needs to be said about that. You know what needs to be talked about is that editing nightmare that this film was. Oh, yeah, let's, like, uh, let's dive into that. On so uh, many technical levels, this film fails. This, like, I, there are so many classes that can be taught it like no matter what your study is for like if you're studying film no matter what your area of expertise is you could just watch this film and then have an example on every single part of it every single department that failed <laughs> Yeah, and be like, this is what not to do, kids, when you're a director. This is what not to do, kids, when you're a writer. This is what not to do, kids, when you're an editor. Like, so, so many things, so many things. Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, we could have cut about forty-five minutes from the film, which oh a friend my. of mine actually did, and it made the movie much more tolerable. Managed to yeah. cut around the weird body snatching trope. Managed to cut out a whole lot of other shit. So yeah. This, this, there was a lot of, I don't know if it was padding or how they were feeling, but yeah. I feel like they thought they had so many good pieces to this movie that they just, they couldn't let go of a single bit of it. That's kind of how it felt. Which feels they thought, like Star Wars episode one. They Look thought that they movies. made themselves a return of the king, but really <laughs> it was just a flaming nightmare and maybe they thought that they knew that it was maybe it's the opposite maybe they knew it was a flaming nightmare but they're like if we keep all these pieces in here somebody's gonna like at least one part of it which i mean right. we did we we fell into the themiscria you know that whole segment at the beginning however i i will have to say there are two segments for this film like of this film for me that can be cut out and not affect the movie at all. And unfortunately, one of those is the Themyscira scene. Yeah, like well, it had no bearing whatsoever on the rest of the film. It's a great scene, yes. And it's probably the one that you sunk probably the most money into. Oh yeah, I mean, obviously their CGI Hi. budget was there because it was not on the cheetah fight. Right. But yeah, I mean, but it also, I mean, and unfortunately what it did for me was made me realize I don't care about Wonder Woman. I just want to see an Amazonian film because this is where the interesting stories are. And we don't, and have, really we don't have unnecessary, and I'm not going to say, this is not something against men, but we don't have unnecessary male characters muddying up the storyline. You know, like we could have just focused on strong women doing cool, badass shit, having relationships with each other. I just feel... I don't know. It was it was one of those things where I know that they really liked, you know, Chris Pine's character. I mean, Chris Pine is great. He's a great actor, you know, and his character had such magnetism in the first movie. And I know what they were thinking. I know what they were thinking as far as they're like, you know, I want to capture this again. Like we really want that same energy on screen again. And, you know, and it, it it's always a treat when I see Chris Pine acting. He did not do a bad job in this movie, you know? And however, he was very unnecessary to the movie. It also ties in this weird thing where Diana is still grieving over somebody, you know, X amount of many decades later. I had issues with as well. And she just I I she only knew the dude for like at okay. most two weeks yeah. and like I get it I get first loves and all of that however I I just don't see as that being the driving force of her motivations to I I don't even know what just be sad 
the yeah, like, for 80 years or however because long she's she's not, she she's, not um, she's not cloistering herself like it was no. supposed in uh, Batman v Superman like she wasn't like had never jumped out of the shadows to fight crime again you know she was still going out there still fighting crime still being Wonder Woman in you know Wonder Woman 1984 but like she was just she was just sad yeah and that and was her that problem her entire, like again she's an immortal god and like you said this person that she knew for just a matter of weeks that she's still pining for him decades later and again i'm not saying like if you love him, him, great, but one the fact that she fell in love with the very first man that she ever met and fell in love with him in that short a time I took issue with that, first of all. Like, okay, love it yeah. first sight. You know what? No, this is the whole like I mean, it's a movie. You have it's to a movie in- dispelling reality. But again, I feel like it's not, I feel like it is a potentially dangerous message to be sending out to young women. And that putting so much stock in relationships, putting so much stock in this whole concept of love at first sight, and that you can't exist and be a whole person without that other person. And you can't have a full life and move on if that person leaves you, you know, it's just, uh, for me, that was very problematic, you know, cause again, she is immortal essentially, you know, and I, that just, that, that thoroughly bothered me. And then the whole, I learned how to fly cause you were a pilot. I'm like, dude, you're a God. What? What? I, okay. So that. I know that bothered a lot of people, but like from a story point of view, from like a character building point of view, I understand like she, she really didn't need to learn how to fly. But like, if that was your end goal, like say, uh, you know, you want your character to learn how to fly. You want that to come from an emotional place. You know, you don't want it to just be like, oh, guess what I just learned. You want it to be motivated by, you know, and rooted in an emotional moment where it's like, yes, you know, I love this man so much. And, you know, he's a pilot and, you know, I feel like I just want to, you know, be able to fly with him or, you know, fly like him or, you know, something like that. Like you feel the pain of loss. And this is something that can connect you once again, even though he's gone, you learn, you know, she learns how to fly. And that is the emotional connection that she's going to keep with her for the rest of her life. Um, and, and that, that is kind of like, to me, from a story perspective, that's kind of nice. Was it executed correctly? No. (laughs) Um, was the invisible jet executed correctly? No. Uh, For that matter. Cause let's be honest, flying through fireworks, probably not something an actual pilot would do. Also cool. You were a pilot in world war one now able to fly modern aircraft. That's, that's cool. That's just movie crap. Like, I know, I know. (laughs) Yes. Like, but that also brings me to the, back to the editing nightmare, the other scene that could have been cut so easily that had like basically zero bearing on the movie at all was the Egypt scene. They go there. The only reason that they had it was so that they can have an invisible jet, uh, so that they can have that like moment, that visually appealing moment of them like flying through the sky in an invisible jet with the fireworks, all that stuff. And then so that they could add in another fight scene that was literally, there was no reason for them to go there because the minute that they go there, they have a fight scene and then they come immediately come back. back. Very quickly, I might add. So quickly. You know, them and no Max. I'm like, wow, you have fancy special jets that can. <laughs> right. There was no quickly. point. And Max Lord, God, I. And again, I'm a big fan of Pedro Pascal. Big fan. Fantastic actor. Fantastic actor. Oh boy. The 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 writing, like the mental gymnastics that he probably had to go I can't through even imagine to justify what he had to go through. his character choices. 
must have been freaking astounding because he goes from not giving a crap about his child until the point the plot needs him to and that's what motivates him to change his mind and be like give back your wishes people which like, like you've literally been ignoring this child the entire movie right and you don't need him until it's convenient for the plot and like you know you get some moments where you know you feel like yeah he loves his son but he's just not a good dad like there are parents out there who love their children they're just not good parents yeah. you know and and that's something that a lot of people have to come to grips with like even though you know even though they might love you it sometimes that love that isn't enough that's not enough to be able to, you know, grow up with, you know, with all the tools you need to become as a human being, like, you know, yeah, it was just this weird thing where it's just like, he's actually like, he might love his son, but he's not a good parent. I don't see him all of a sudden making this choice like oh well I just remembered that I had a son I just also, remembered I'm gonna that. run through all of this the streets of this major city and just happen to you know run into him at the just run that right into there he's like, like oh look how convenient that you ran right into him. but helicopter like, me to this random field in Washington right? I bet my son's in and there, this is what hurts right. the most because it's like you know, like I watched Pedro Pascal obviously in The Mandalorian, but dude, if anybody has seen Narcos, like he is fucking brilliant in that show. Narcos is an amazing, like you want to see acting, right. watch Narcos, and I'm just like, yes, Pedro Pascal. And then I was just like, oh, he had to just the, the writing. It just it hurt me to because I I could yeah. feel like. It and then the wig that he's wearing, I'm just like, dude, you are such a brilliant actor. This must be hurting you. And Kristen Wig too. All. Like Kristen Wig is a great actress as well. But I'm like, Pedro, this this can't be easy for you. It no, can't. you've no. got to understand what's going on right now. <laughs> I feel like the movie also suffers from fake wokeness. It really does. I and that's sad because it just has this veneer of trying to make a statement with the like Donald Trump looking Max Lord, but like they don't know what they want Max Lord to do or even what his motivations are. And so that falls flat on its face. Because I guess you his want- motivation is to, con- to, to, to be the most powerful, to control the most right. things, to be, to be the wish master. Like, I, yeah, exactly. It's like, what, like it starts off in a place of like, he wants to have a successful business. Okay. That's cool. Like, I see that you're kind of leaning into the, um, what's his face. Um, Superman's top villain, dude, Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor. Yeah. I just like trying to lean into that Lex Luthor thing. And it's like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I get that. But then it goes to being like, but I must exactly like you said, I must be the most powerful. I must like grant these wishes or else I'm going to die sort of thing. It's weird. I, I don't really quite understand what was going on at the end there. <laughs> yeah, Not like, character. Like projecting like, himself like, to the world. and With this weird veneer of being feminist and being a feminist movie, you have Cheetah who you're pitting a woman against a woman and you do that the entire time all throughout this, you know, character who I would argue is they, they gave her the Jamie Foxx in the Spider-Man movie treatment. Like she started off as a victim, as a vulnerable person who wasn't bad, who didn't have any ill will or bad thoughts or wanted to do bad things. Like she didn't she was a, a brilliant scientist violent. and apparently that wasn't enough she didn't have a compunction towards violence she didn't no. have like you know like oh i also you know steal things at the grocery store like yeah. or you know pickpocket or beat people up she didn't have any of that and yet they villainize her and they continue to do that in a way that ends up that her character dies she's the only one that gets yeah. killed like well, and then, I mean, like is, killed yeah. you don't know if she's dead or alive right. like but instead of addressing killed. the toxic masculinity that she was obviously facing at work they have her feel like she has to change herself so now the movie is showing us that 
hey, if you're facing sexism and discrimination at work, don't address it. Don't call people out on it. Oh, and don't have your best friend Diana call people out on it. Change yourself so you were more appealing to your male colleagues. Like that was the whole takeaway I got from that. Cause now she's wearing uh, stilettos. And well, also you have this very weird thing where like Diana's not helping at all. No, she just, <laughs> Diana's not fucking helping at all. Like she sees that she is miserable, that she's upset, that she has all this self hate for, you know, all this self hate and she does nothing. <laughs> to try and mitigate it or make yeah. her feel better or make her feel more welcome. Or I don't know, tell like, the guys at the office to stop being fucking dicks. That, like, this, that, the other thing, like, she's just not being supportive. And so, like, what is the message with Cheetah's character? Like, either you're born perfect, like Diana, or you need to become a monster to achieve the same level of respect that people give Diana. Right. Like, no, that, that is horrible. That is like for women, like for men or women, that's a horrible, horrible take moment. home for people who do, who are vulnerable yeah. for people who, you know, don't quite fit into, you know, socialized spaces, yeah. you know, like this is not good for vulnerable people to learn self-confidence and self-acceptance. It, and that, it, you know, it's, it's a bad enough, message. Yeah, and it's not enough to be a brilliant scientist with like four PhDs or whatever she had. Like right. she's not, you know, nothing against baristas, but she's not like a waitress or a barista. This, she has four PhDs. How is that not amazing in and of itself? She's not a God who's been around for hundreds or thousands of years. Like she has four PhDs in her 40 years on earth. Like right. that's incredible to me. That is an amazing message to be sending to people. And but it's no. kind of weird that she doesn't use any of her four PhDs to realize that turning yourself into like a literal cat woman is uh, not probably a not the best idea. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I how want, did she think she was cool ever going to be able to walk down the street? Right. I want the cool kids to notice me. That's what matters. It's like, this is a, so far the other way, like you really wanted, like you were really happy with your glow up and you're working out and your makeups and like your new cool outfits. And then all of a sudden she's just like, but cat person, obviously that's going to get the attention of the boys. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> I thought your motivations were completely. Di I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, but yeah. So Max Lord talking about people like getting their comeuppance, Cheetah gets killed, Cheetah gets and uh, Max Lord gets to be with his son in a field yeah, have, after yeah. almost causing complete nuclear fallout, like yeah, manipulating like, world leaders, stealing shit, killing people, killing people, like all the people that like died in car crashes alone with the, like the Ferrari scene, which I thought was so stupid. Like it, it, that no he's not going to get punished at all. Yeah. No repercussions <laughs> for this. You Just know? like, Meh, I don't know. Maybe he learned his you know, and again, This is like, it's like the whole, you know, last Jedi sort of thing. It's like, Oh, Kylo Ren, you helped save Ray, and we're going to kiss now. Oh, but let's, right. let's not forget all the people that you've murdered, including children. And the fascism. One, one good thing. So we're just going to forget about all that other stuff. I mean, at least I, he died, but. I would argue that this is almost a worse, oh. I mean, like, the fascism aside, but this is more like a real, like, you know, a real world worst message to send to people because it assumes it, it kind of implies that white collar crime is not criminal that people in power that like manipulate and work these these agencies and, and these like uh you know from politicians top down and you know politicians and you know who are at the top of you know the of of businesses and corporations like 
it's fine to let them off scot-free because you know what real harm did they do like yeah maybe they embezzled some money they well, did some like lot, random maybe. shifting of like alliances and maybe you know like they did some of these other things like that's a arguably the white collar crime and like the doing all of this um you know perpetuating like awful oh my god cat hair perpetuating all of this awful crap that goes on with you know major business leaders you know making bad decisions you know for the environment for you know social spaces it's just Better like please yeah it's just not well in this case it's a bad take collar, but his white collar crimes led to wars in the middle east um the destruction of San, was it San Francisco? I don't even know what city we we're in anymore. Um, whatever city they were in, I mean, uh, in Washington. It was DC, I think. That's right. It was yeah, DC. they're in DC. Yeah, I mean, but it wasn't just there. I mean, we're literally watching like they're tearing people apart. So it's like, you know, really no concept. Like Diana, you're not going to get this guy, and I don't know, put him in jail. I mean, I'm assuming this child has a mother. We've never <laughs> seen right. that mother. Uh, it's this just like. Movie. You know, like we, when you hear about like, you know, stark ma stock market crashes or, you know, the, you know, insider trading stuff and, you know, things of that nature. And you hear about like the little guys that were affected that lost everything. Like, yeah, sure. Like the millionaires, you know, they lost money or whatever, but like, they're going to be all right. You know, they didn't actually like lose their house, lose their job, you know, like, didn't cause their like family to like totally be dismantled and you know have their entire lives disrupted by this whole thing like that's exactly what's happening with this max lord crap it's just like no like <laughs> it, it's it's not just you know the the big fish that are being hurt it's not just like the government or the politicians that are being manipulated it all trickles down exactly like who's going to clean up the mess that you left dc also that too <laughs> like the, it was just a weird thing to have him just kind of just leave the scene <laughs> right and i also again going back to being a bad parent like what message does that send your child oh daddy did all these really 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 horrible things but he realized he loved you at the end. So all those bad things don't matter anymore. It's like, no, no, no. We need to have a conversation about actions have consequences. Even if you end up making a good decision at the end, it does not negate all of the bad choices you've made before. Right. The most because of you. The That's most the like to send to a child. The most visceral, like your parents aren't actually hero, like superheroes sort of realization that ch that child is going to grow up and be like oh <laughs> like oh yeah maybe maybe my dad isn't such a good person um because like the kid still like hero worships his dad there is no like point in time where he's like my dad's actually a horrible person like like in the end like pedro pascal still got to keep the respect of his son also, <laughs> still weird. got to not yeah. have to live life behind bars yeah miraculously weird it's just so strange and the in the tone like the end of the uh, the end of the movie was just like everybody renounces their wishes but like not everybody i'm going to assume made selfish wishes you know yeah, like I mean, there was definitely had to have been those people that were wishing for world peace and or like even like i don't want my dad to you know have alzheimer's anymore or like yeah, i like, want you know my pet you know i i like i want my cat not to have cancer anymore or you know something something that like or if only i had this much money then i could pay off all my credit card debt you know right. or my student loans or you know they're there or you know or i can you know donate this money to you know charity whatever i'm sure out there like a lot of good wishes were made and when you pit that like against like 
other people who, you know, right. for the Ferrari right. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> then it's just like these people you're why are we equating some of these people's wishes that are obviously selfish with other people's wishes that probably were pretty great like and diana's just standing there like fucking well, grandstanding I mean, like the, other the thing truth is the only thing that matters it's like no right. my student debts are currently the only thing that matters right. in my life like and the fact that it had to be <laughs> steve, steve who pushed her to take her or to to renounce her wish like she's literally watching the world fall apart and she can't she knows what she has to do but she can't do it i so know it takes the dude to mansplain her into what she already knows all you can have is the, make truth. the choice to let him uh, go it's I'm insane like, oh. I, and like and that's not that's not even so much a bother to me because again with the flying thing you're going to have to have this grounded in a very emotional decision like chris pine was the only thing that she ever wanted she he was the only selfish wish that she had for herself she was still going to go out and fight she was still going to go out and you know do the thing at the museum you know do her day job you know like this was her one like selfish thing that she just wanted to keep but like she knows that she can't and you know it's really emotional for her because it just happens to be a person that she loves that she has to let go i get it i get the character motivation still executed extremely poorly when you see the literal world crumbling around you yep it it like the effects are very real and very extreme and how that is not a motivator in itself it makes well, her I, look like she's not a hero right and the fact is is that again we have to remember that diana is not a normal person she is part god she is immortal she has superpowers so we're not projecting onto her what a normal person would do like she has established herself as being i'm not going to say better than humans but she is god well, she's like superman she yeah. is supposed to be so kind of like the greatest standards. yeah we have higher part. standards for her is what i'm trying right. to say it's like okay the average person i get it the love of your life is gone even then i would argue if the love of your life is brought back but the world's falling apart and you know what you have to do like you could make that decision but to, to you know that's the average person but to do that to someone who is an immortal god with superpowers who is a superhero and for them to be unable to make that decision on their own again takes us back to what you said early on jen she's not a hero yeah i mean like i guess you can equate the same thing with superman and lois lane um like superman in the movies at least like the last few movies makes some selfish and odd decisions regarding you know protecting lois lane um but like the thing with wonder woman and her being a hero and heroes in general is that heroes are supposed to be set to a higher standard they're supposed to be what is the best of humanity and we didn't see that we didn't get that with wonder woman like i really wanted you know i really want there to be character flaws in my heroes of course and this emotional attachment to um chris pine's character could have been that like i'm not I'm not saying that like I absolutely hated that as as her motivator because I mean like they decided to bring him back so he's there. However, it just the contrast between what is happening, how it's happening, the state and escalation, you know, that it gets to it's a little too it's a little too much for her to be selfish at that moment. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if it were, if it were just something, something else, I don't know. I, I don't know what it would be, but like, it, it just seemed so, 
not heroic, not heroic. Yeah. you know, and they kind of posit it as this like big aha moment. But what did she learn? We, you know, like we go back, we circle right back to the constantly changing themes and the central theme just wasn't there. It continually changed. So we're kind of left in this weird hanging spot of her making this choice and you're like but what did she learn <laughs> what are the cent what is the theme what what did you learn and and she just waxes on like for 10 minutes about you know like all you can have is the truth yeah. like this is you know the most important thing is the truth and yeah. like sure but like how does that connect in in any way with chris pine like he he is he is dead yes i get that and you have to come to terms with that in your grief but at the same time how does that motivate you to relinquish your wish you know like how does that it, it doesn't connect all these things are very disjointed they couldn't be pieced together to make yeah. any sense and it really reads as a jumbled mess in characters making bad decisions having dangerous messages put into your film yep. like it, it just turned into this weird thing where they definitely tried to go the woke route and trying to make a feminist statement and falling flat on yeah. their face yeah. and, and then to end the movie with her talking to the guy whose body they had hijacked. Oh, that was very strange as well. Where it's just like, oh, hey, you, dude. Don't, you don't get to talk to him, Diana. You don't can get to talk to him. Get out of here. You're not wanted anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's let, let me tell you about what, uh, what we were doing with your body the past uh, week. And she like, and it's really creepy because she like fucking she like fucking charlie roses it by like giving him this like huh you are kind of hot it's like no <laughs> no like oh god so so wrong i think we should end it on there because that's like right. that's a good solid place to end it yeah that little tidbit right there was just like okay <laughs> thank you movie Thanks Thank for you. reminding us I'm, of the big decision you made. That I'm incredibly you. uncomfortable. Thank yeah, you. let's bring it back at the end. Okay, cool. Uh, so no, what did I'm we not. learn, Lindsay? What did we learn? What is our central theme for? I mean, the, I guess our central the show. theme is, uh, uh, I, don't, um, I don't know. I you can make good. Well, I mean, the Justice League fell short. I mean. Cry. You can, you can I don't make know. good films. Don't make shit I, films. Just, just you know. And if you're gonna make, you know, and know what you're making. Like, if you're gonna make a cheesy action well, movie, don't get me wrong. I love a good cheesy action movie. I still love the original Mortal Kombat movie. I will stand by that movie. It brings me pleasure. Is it gonna win an Oscar? No, it is not. Do I know what it is? Yes, I do. But you know, it's like and. And we can't also use this as an example of this is why women can't be in lead roles and this is why we can't have female direct. No, 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 no. That is not the takeaway. The takeaway <laughs> is a lot of shit fell flat in this movie. It was not on one person. Obviously, it had to go through layers and layers and layers of approval. But pay attention uh... to what decade we're in. Pay attention to what society is really like these days. And don't be putting out these dated, dangerous messages to people. Weird, weird movies. I guess let's use, all right, I'm going to try and use the uh, the central themes that they tried to. So uh, don't cheat and try and cut corners on uh, every single department. <laughs> uh, let's see. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, probably shouldn't have brought Chris Pine back, even though you really, really wanted to. Grass is not if always you were wishing. You were wishing for a big box office, and he was going <laughs> to help with that. And all you can have is the truth, which is your movie fucking sucked. There we go. Central we go. themes. <laughs> Tying it all together. And please give us our Amazonian spinoff.
that's that's the only yeah thing I, I guess I suppose I don't know do I want them to continue <laughs> I just, want, I just want, should we wait for the reboot i just want general antio i just want robin wright you know give me give me an amazon give me an amazonian tv series right i guess at most we can at, at most we can hope for a spin-off i'm praying for uh the reboot it's just <laughs> to be honest just, just scorch earth like, start, start over let's just start over yeah suicide squad it um all right well thank you so much for joining us today uh if you liked this video please like please subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications every time that we do an update we update every friday at noon and um if you liked that we were in absolute agony and pain today reviewing this movie i, I know it's been long awaited but uh let us know down in the comments. Uh, let us know if there are some other movies that you would yeah. like us to see and just absolutely tear apart because we will do that. <laughs> it is it is kind of masochistic it, in a way. Like it, this kind of thing is sort of fun for me and sort of not. Um, so yes, please join us next time. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you. Bye. All right, bye.